Although most of us complain about traffic jams, polluted air, and high taxes, we have to admit living in the 21st century is pretty nice. Can you imagine driving without GPS? Can you imagine life without your smartphone? Sometimes I wonder why do we need to learn history, geography, and chemistry when we can find all we need on the web? But as the web gets bigger and bigger, finding the right information has become harder and harder. Years ago, we learned only from textbooks. Now we have learned that textbooks are outdated as soon as they are printed. While we can't really trust the contents either, even government reports are sometimes twisted. That is why I sometimes overthink what I hear on the news. I often try to figure out the true meaning of what is happening. You see, Main Street Media may tell you what happened, but they usually don't reveal to you the details. Conspiracy theorists will tell you what's behind the news, but those are viewed from their angles. If sharing views from my angle makes me a conspiracy theorist, then I guess I have to plead no contest as I do have my own views on many issues. For example, when I read about our first interstellar visitor, O Mau Mau, on October 28, 2017, I immediately thought, it's a spaceship. I released my series of videos since October 28, 2017. You see, I found it hard to imagine a cigar-shaped object with high metal content moving at an average speed of 14.21 miles per second from another solar system can be anything but an alien spaceship. Of course, I'm not alone in this theory. Actually, I'm sure many scientists feel the same way. However, they can't even bring up the possibility as that will ruin their careers. But think this way. For an object this small, traveling this far in the universe, how can it keep on its eccentric 7 million year orbit without being pulled by the many stars and planets on its wandering path? And please note that it did not pass by us. It changed its course when it passed by the sun. You can say it was pulled by our sun's gravity force. But if that is the case, does it change course every time it passes by a star like our sun? Do you know how many stars it has passed? When NASA plans its space missions, it always takes advantage of the planetary gravitational pulls so we can get a slingshot effortlessly to our destination. Maybe our alien neighbors do the same thing using our sun's gravity. Or like I showed in this 2012 widely circulated video, the alien spaceship came close enough to refuel at our sun, but stayed far enough away to avoid being sucked in. This video taken by NASA camera received lots of attention. And soon after, NASA debunked the alien spaceship theory by calling this video a coronal mass ejection. For viewers not familiar with this term, listen here. A coronal mass ejection, or CME, is a significant release of plasma and magnetic field from the solar corona. They often follow solar flares and are normally present during a solar prominence eruption. The plasma is released into the solar wind and can be observed in coronagraph imagery. So, how often does coronal mass ejection happen? Near solar maxima, the sun produces about three CMEs every day, whereas near solar minima, there is about one CME every five days. Happy? Now we know aliens are not coming, right? Or do we? Let's take a look at this coronal mass ejection 
and compare with this unknown object bigger than Earth sucking energy from the sun. Wow. Should I say the resemblance is striking? Or the resemblance is on strike? Actually, I saw nothing alike in these two videos, especially when you consider the fact that the UFO stayed near the sun for over 80 hours. If coronal mass ejection happens once a day, and this 2012 video is one, how come we only have one video? But if this video is not a coronal mass ejection, why wouldn't NASA scientists uh, tell us what it was? I guess NASA was confident that most people won't question its statement. If we can't trust NASA, who can we trust? Honestly, I am not sure. I don't think NASA would intentionally mislead us. Unless it is the truth we can't handle. Can you imagine how the public will react if there was an alien craft that crashed in Roswell in 1947? Can you imagine the wave of global panic? Is it better for the United States to keep the alien technology than to share with foreign allies? Is it better to call it a weather balloon than to show aliens blown? When I read about the recent discovery of a habitable planet 11 light years away called Ross 128b, I was shocked. Not because it was so close to us, as we do have Proxima Centauri b only 4.22 light years away. That is 1.3 times the mass of Earth and in a Goldilocks zone. But because the scientists said Ross 128 is moving towards our sun, the CNN article I read stated that Ross 128 will be the closest star to our sun in just 79,900 years. Ross 128 needs to move 14.6 miles per second to move that distance in 79,900 years. Do you know how fast that is? It is faster than the last interstellar object that visited us. And why does it move towards us so quickly? Is it heading towards Earth? Or is it our sun's binary twin? That was what I thought when I first heard about Ross 128. But when I did more research, I realized that Ross 128 would be our closest star in 79,900 years because it is coming towards us and because Proxima Centauri b is moving farther. 79,900 years from now, Ross 128 will be about 6.5 light years away just enough to beat Proxima Centauri. But this news did not bring me much relief, as I also learned that Ross 128 is 20 stars from us in distance. Three other stars will be closer to us than Proxima Centauri in the next 45,000 years. Based on this graphic, they will all come near us, stop before entering our solar system, and then turn away. The only question is if these charts are 100% reliable. We know so little about space. We may find another star closer, or another planet perfect for life. The findings tomorrow may bring us answers from our past and clues to find our future. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.